Training can make all the difference to an aircrew hoping to survive a splashdown. That's why the Aviation Survival Training Center organized a rescue survival demonstration in the Chesapeake Bay. The 40 degree water and wind chill allow participants to gain a realistic expectation of a cold water rescue. Ejecting out of an aircraft, uh, individual with some potential injuries, getting in the water, uh, wearing their anti-exploder suit, and it's difficult to understand how it would be to get the, the gear out and operate the radio when you, when you can't use your fingers. We don't go in that depth here at the Survival Training Center, but uh, we certainly did uh, with this evolution. Four Patuxent River aviators volunteered to take part in the training. The volunteers entered the water wearing one of three anti-exposure suits currently used by the Navy. To fully understand the mental and physical challenges of cold water exposure, the men stayed in the water for 15 minutes, boarded a life raft, then called for search and rescue teams. We took sort of temperature pills, basically, to monitor what our inside temperature was. We had stuff on our skin to measure surface temperature. The biggest thing is just not knowing, okay, I know I'm jumping in about 45, 46 degree water. I just don't know how it's going to feel. You don't get picked up right away if you eject offshore, you're going to spend some time in the water. When search and rescue swimmers arrived on scene, the volunteer survivors had spent close to an hour in the raft. Cold and tired, the men relied heavily on SAR team members to pull them to safety. It's what you would encounter on a real rescue scenario, the survivor being helpless, they're in a state of hypothermia. Uh, the stress level, even though it's training, you're applying these devices to them. It's a living person that you're trying to get back in the helicopter as safely as possible. My hands went numb trying to place the straps around the survivor within the 10 or 15 minutes, so that made it even more challenging. The size of the anti-exposure suit wasn't the only issue. The suits restricted the wearer's movements once in the water. Survival breaststroke is what we, we instruct here because it maintains visibility, yet when you have suits that already have built-in buoyancy in them, it made a lot of the individuals pronate or float on their back, and so they were you know, restricted to survival backstroke. When they got out of the water into the raft and tried to operate and find their gear, finding the gear was very difficult. ASTC will use lessons learned from this event to improve survival training techniques and equipment. For everyone involved, the opportunity to train in a real-life scenario proved invaluable. The training we have works uh, it reinforced some things that are definite, you know, things that I brought back to my ready room on knowing where your gear is and your survival vest and, and actually how difficult it was to access some of the gear. Um, but in terms of the, the actual rescue, you know, we were in a training environment, but after spending about an hour in the raft, I mean, you felt you know, sort of the emotion and the response of going, man, I'm so glad they're here. It was huge. It definitely helped us with training as far as devices and live recovery of survivors wearing survival suits, which is, it's, it's a rare, unique training opportunity that's awesome.